Hey everybody, I'm Nafil from JetBrains and welcome to PineShark 2021.3. this release, we have the motherload of new things coming along your way. Now, a lot of the times I get questions as to whether PyCharm is going to support remote development. I get this question everywhere, whether it's from Twitter or just down the street walking and somebody asks me, hey, is PyCharm going to have remote development? And the answer is yes. This time around, we're unveiling something called JetBrains Gateway, which allows you to run a headless version of PyCharm on a server. Here's Carol Scriven, the person who has spearheaded this effort inside of JetBrains to tell you a little bit about what remote development at JetBrains means and what we're all about. Remote development fundamentally changes a developer's productivity. This is the future of programming. Whether we are talking about the performance uh, or security of the development, or if we are talking about sharing of the development environment, in all of those aspects, remote development is totally a game changer. This fall, we are happy to announce the remote development support for lots of our IDEs, including PyCharm. An amazing thing about remote development for PyCharm is that although the source code is being uh, run on a remote server and the PyCharm server is being there, However, you will get 99% of your beloved PyCharm features on your local client machine. What is even more important is that even if your server is somewhere far away from you, the typing and editing experience is designed to be very, very responsive. So please give it a try, share your feedback, and let's build the future of programming together. Okay, thanks, Kiro. So here is a short video on what JetBrains Gateway can do, how to set it up, and what it feels like. In this release, we've added a new way of using PyCharm, and that is using a headless version of PyCharm on a server. All you need to do is put in your username and the host, make sure that it already accepts your SSH key, plug in your SSH ID and start and check the connection. Once you do that, you'll be asked a couple of times whether you're sure about this host, you have to say yes and put in your password. Once this is complete, you have to select your IDE version and you have to choose the directory where you want to work in. Now, you can also open up an SSH terminal in the server. So in this example, I'm just going to create a directory called code the reason why I like to do this is because otherwise PyCharm just creates the project at the root directory and it's better to create your own directory and know exactly what you're getting into. Once that's complete, I'm going to create a file called new.py so that I can see it when I open everything up in PyCharm. Now that we've selected the right directory, we can go and download the IDE. It will ask us for our password a couple of times. We just need to put that in and then it will go ahead and start downloading the IDE. Once the IDE is downloaded, you'll be able to see it just like PyCharm on the desktop. And in this case, I'm just going to open new.py. I'm going to write a small script and I'm going to run it and I'm going to see that this indeed is running on the server. Okay. Now, another thing that folks have been asking for a very long time is whether or not we're going to have better Jupyter Notebook support. And this time around, we've worked really hard to build Jupyter Notebook support from scratch, just putting everything out and starting anew. And here's a short video on what it's like in PyCharm now and all the features that it has. In this release, we have full Jupyter Notebook support. So for example, we have the ability to just go up and down an actual Jupyter Notebook using our arrow keys, and we can dive into any code block. In this case, this is Markdown and it'll turn into Markdown. Furthermore, we also have all the great PyCharm features that you're used to, like code completion and auto import, as well as path completion and strings. But that's not all. We also have the ability to visualize data sets really well. So for example, we can visualize a data frame completely here in the output column. We can scroll through it horizontally, vertically, as well as select particular rows or columns. 
And of course we can open it up in a new tab and rearrange how we order the different columns. Markdown in Python isn't the only thing that you can edit. You can also change LaTeX code in this example, as well as work with all kinds of different outputs. So for example, here we have an image that is generated from app.lib and we can right click and save it if we want to. Now, of course, with any Python file, you can set a debug point just about anywhere. And you can do exactly the same in a Jupyter Notebook in this latest release. And you can go ahead and debug your notebook. This means that you get all the good stuff like step into, step over, but you can also hover and view in a separate tab any variable that you may choose. Great thing here is that we have support for different kinds of pandas data structures, whether they are series or views or data frames. Over the past year, Fast API has grown in popularity like you wouldn't believe. And that's why we at PyCharm have decided to support it. In this release of PyCharm, we have new support for Fast API. And when we mean support, we mean support. We've rolled out a whole host of new features that other people can only dream of emulating. In this release, we've added support for Fast API. So when you go ahead and start a new project, you should see Fast API as an option. So in this example, we're going to use Virtual AMV to create our environment and go on ahead. This will install everything you need in order to get started with your fast API project, like installing Uvicorn. PyCharm will do something even better, which is download third party indexes for you so that you don't have to spend all your time indexing. In this release, not only do we have support for fast API, but we have support for endpoints, meaning that you can navigate between endpoints and their respective views inside of your code base. So here I'm navigating from a request file to the endpoint that this particular request is using inside of my fast API application. Furthermore, you can just debug the application right out of the box. So you don't have to configure Uvicorn with any arguments. You can just hit the debug button and it will work as expected. However, if you wanted to change the way your application behaved, you could just go ahead into run configurations and change the command line options. And you can see further command line options on the Uvicorn documentation page. And lastly, and this is probably my favorite part, we are going to dive into endpoints. What endpoints are, are basically anchors in your code base that allow you to navigate to different endpoints and generate client requests based on top of those endpoints. So in this example, we can create a request right out of our hello endpoint. This currently works for both Fast API and Flask. Last but not least, we've added support for poetry. Now, a lot of you have been asking for support for this particular package manager for quite a long time. And this time around, we listened to you and we implemented it. And here's a short video on how it works and the features that it has. In this release, we've added poetry support, meaning that you can start a new project using poetry as your environment manager. In this example, we are going to create a fast API project using poetry. This will set up your project using poetry new from the command line tool and that should give you everything you need to set up your Poetry project. Here, if I add a new requirement such as requests, PyCharm will ask me if I want to update it and then it will update it. And that automatically installs everything that is required to my interpreter. However, this isn't the only way to install a package using the new Poetry support. We can also Alt Enter install pretty much any package like we normally do and Poetry will take care of adding that for us. So in this case, the package Maya is being installed and also the index for it is being downloaded. And if we head over to pyproject.toml, we'll be able to see that Maya has indeed been installed. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. These videos are always so much fun to do and to tell everybody what we've been up to. I feel like this release has been something that we're really proud of and has a lot of things that are just plain awesome. Some things didn't get an explicit mention, for example, uh, with regards to shared indexes now being able to be downloaded. I mentioned this all the way back in PyCharm 2021.1. Now it's finally here and it works for some of the most popular libraries. 
And just, just as a side note, we do have support for remote development through JetBrains Gateway, but it is still in beta. There's, a, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in order to refine it. So feedback is always welcome. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.